Brad Pitt, Henry Cavill, Johnny Depp. These three men all led an extraordinary acting career and all of them drove the ladies insane. It's almost impossible to find a woman who doesn't think that these guys aren't extremely attractive. Even women who are interested in other women find them very good looking and attractive. So what is the trait that these guys share that makes them very pleasing to look at? All the traits that if you are lucky enough to have will put you in the higher end of the look scale and make dating life easier than most men. The answer to that question is a masculine jaw and eyes. Both of these hold equal importance. But in today's video we will be dissecting what makes the perfect masculine jaw and leave the eyes to be discussed in another video. This video will be split into two parts. Why women are attracted to masculine jaws. What makes a male jaw masculine? So what makes a woman attracted to strong, angular and masculine jaws? There are many things at play here. Dimorphism is one of them. What is dimorphism? To put it in simple terms, it's traits that makes a woman more feminine and the man more masculine. For example, dimorphic traits that make the man more masculine are a full beard, a prominent and strong broad bridge is also perceived as masculine facial feature to have. Having deep set hunter eyes, veiny hands, deep voice, prominent cheekbones being tall and muscular also count. And the trait that our video revolves around, a square angular strong jaw is considered very desirable masculine trait to have. Also a study showed that girls at certain points of their menstrual cycle are attracted to guys with strong square jaws cause that's an indicator of high testosterone which is highly desirable to women. It shows that you have strong dental growths healthy immune system, low levels of body fat and strength and strong bones. Because if you think about it logically from a woman's perspective and a, bi uh, and a biological perspective, women want the best genetics for their, op uh, for their offsprings. She wants to give birth to strong, good looking children. This is why an underdeveloped jaw or a weak jaw can hinder your chances in the dating market and it will make it difficult for you to have sex often or, or if at all if it's really bad. Now this can be fixed with proper tongue posture and developing jaw muscles to help you look more attractive. But if your genetics are really that bad then dermal fillers plastic surgery is also a solution. Another reason is pop culture and social media. Women have been exposed to movies since the 70s and 80s where the young main character have all the looks and chiseled jaw. Now with the rise of apps like Instagram and TikTok they spend hours scrolling through posts after posts of e-boys and thirst trap after thirst trap, the expectation of how their boyfriend should look like gets set. And if those standards don't get met or at least some of them, the risk of rejection gets higher. Now that looks are more important than ever and it plays a big big role in the dating world, having the proper jaw has never been more important. So now let's move on to the mathematics of what makes your lower third jaw attractive. You can follow along and use the same methods to rate your face as well. First thing first, you shouldn't have a steep down sloping gonior angle. The perfect gonior angle is around 130 degrees and 110 degrees. It gives you a look of maturity and strength. If you are between these values, don't worry, you are in the safe zone. Of course, you don't want to have a 90 degrees gonior angle as well because you're gonna look like Minecraft Steve. But there are some lucky few who can look good with it. But having a conial angle too steep puts you in the red zone. It gives you a child and underdeveloped like look that's gonna make you look less masculine. Second thing, having lots of fats under your jaw is gonna destroy all the definition, angularity and lines that shape off your face. You want the skin under your jaw and hyoid area to wrap perfectly and neatly on your jaw and neck. Losing weight will help you clear off all the extra fat surrounding your jaw and exposing all the goodness hiding underneath there. But if you lost fat and still have lots of loose skin hiding the definition, you can always get surgery to get rid of it. Because what's the point of having a chad like jaw if it's gonna be hidden under layers and layers of fat? Third point, you should have long or you should, uh, or should I say forward grown mandible. A good way to see if you have a forwardly grown mandible or not is to take a picture of your side profile and draw two lines crossing at your nasal bridge. If your mandible lines up with your nasal bridge, you are good and set. Even if it goes past the nasal bridge, you are still good, don't worry. A, forward, a forwardly grown mandible will give you a strong masculine look. It's an indicative of growth and strength and maturity. However, if you have an underdeveloped mandible, you are in the red zone because again, it's gonna make you look weak and childlike. 
The fourth punch is having a forwardly grown protruding chin that chucks in, uh, that chucks in nicely uh, under your bottom lip. Otherwise, you will have a flat chin and nobody wants a flat chin. The fifth point is having a nice straight mandible, so straight you can use it as a ruler to draw a perfect line. Having a straight mandible will add in to the angularity, symmetry and overall masculine looking jaw. It's an indicative of high testosterone and strength. However, you don't want a curved looking mandible. It doesn't give off the same masculine look as a straight mandible, which makes your face look softer instead of being angular, which is the desirable look for men to have. The sixth point is the ramus lens. What is the ramus? The ramus is the bone between the ear and the mandible. As for the ramus, you want it to be lengthy. This way, it's going to make your jaw a bit bigger and grown, adding more volume to it, giving it a masculine and strong look. Now, having an average ramus lens is fine, but having a short or very short ramus is undesirable, doesn't look as masculine, it gives off a weak, childlike look. Now for the final point, we will be finally talking about your jaw and face from the front. Now you want your right and left proportions of your jaw to be close to symmetrical or at least have some levels of symmetry to them. Because I don't believe there is a 100% symmetrical looking jaw that isn't generated by a computer. And which comes to your chin, it should be equal or close to the right or left size of your jaw. This way it's going to give that angular masculine desirable look. A shorter chin and length, in contrast to the jaw, will give you a pointy looking lower third. And a chin that's longer in length, in contrast to your jaw, will give you the Minecraft Steve look. You will look like a square box, but again, there are some people who can pull these looks off. This final point is not as important as some others I pointed out earlier. From my research, this is what makes the male jaw attractive, masculine and desirable. Once I do some more research on this subject, I will upload more videos discussing it further. This wraps up today's video, hope you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe for more future content and to help the channel grow. Catch you guys in the next one.